So you've been getting the videos? Yes. Okay, good. And then did you have your memos? Yes. yes. Okay, I'd like to take a look at them real quick. <laughs> and then um, market updates, can you give me an update on the Dow? On yes. Oil, uh, gold, uh, 10 year trade yield, and uh, the dollar to the pound, dollar to the euro. Can I um, mark this up and then uh, fax it back to you? Yes. And we go back and forth to clean it up. Your graphs are a little too big. They're too big? Yeah. And okay. your uh, derivative trades need to be up in upper and lower case. You need some spacing before and after the, the table. Um, your bullet points need to have data in it uh, and analysis, particularly percentage changes. And oil prices forecast mm -hmm. to rise, uh, not gold prices to increase. So it's very specific. Mm -hmm. So if you send me your, uh, write down your email address, right. um, and maybe a fax number too. Okay. And then do you have your memos yeah, too? Yeah, uh, but I didn't print out. Oh, okay. Um, can you see? All right. So can you finish the uh, homework and the presentation for next week? Um, yes. Is that possible? I'd like to confirm with uh, the other two, but. Okay, I, I'm just trying to continue to push. Yeah, no. <laughs> so we can get this back, you know, underneath this, so we can focus on the the final, okay. which I'll just pick, you know, problems uh -huh. um, that are key, and then um, the homework three and four again. I'll just pick some problems, and then that'll be the end of it. That'll be the end of for, for the exam. That, for and the homework. And the homework. Okay. Because yeah. so so for homework number two, we were supposed to choose uh, three, three from uh, each chapter, yeah. and then you're yeah. going to give us. Uh, for homework three and four, you're going to tell us what to do. Yeah. Which, no, yeah. Okay. Let me let me look at it and see okay. how, it kind of, how it turns out. And then um, and then if you guys like what we could do for the, uh, the final night, um, do you like maybe a re will you have classes after this? No. No. Oh no, no I don't. Do you have class after after this one? Mm -hmm. class? No. Okay. no. Uh, what we could do is do like a, a wrap up. On everything, and then go over to the salt house, Ooh, and okay. uh, you know, I'll buy you guys you know, drinks and hors d'oeuvres and stuff like that. Sounds great. Do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I thought we should be a little bit more civilized. You know? I mean, I'm not gonna. I don't offer that to all my classes. Okay. Uh, but since you guys are, you know, work so hard and. You know, yeah, such a great job. It's a small group. I think you should do something nice. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So I have to leave at um, at five. Okay, right around five, maybe a little after, because I a friend of mine, her uh, mother passed away oh. in, in India, so she had to go to India. Oh. So she asked me to cover a class for her. Okay. So chapter seventeen. Um, is on um, options on stock indices and currencies. Mm -hmm. And it basically uses the, the Black-Scholes model mm -hmm. um, to do the valuations, uh, which is pretty straightforward, uh, which I'll go over in a minute. But let me just walk you through the mathematics you know, on the indices. So the indexes that are used um, to trade these option contracts is the S&P 100, the OEX is an American option, and the XEO is a Euro. European option. Um, the S&P 500 is a European option, and the uh, index is SPX. This is the most liquid of them all, uh, which is traded the most and used the most for uh, portfolio insurance for people who are or portfolio managers that are managing uh, equity uh, portfolios, because they can use those as, as portfolio insurance. And then the Dow Jones DJX, uh, it's also a European option, and the NASDAQ 100 is also a European option. So you, you exercise at the end of the period. Um, these are exchange traded, so it's 100 times the index, and they're settled in cash. So there's no margin on these things. Uh, the index options can be used as portfolio insurance. You're gonna have the beta, the strike price, and then the value. So for example, if you think that the index is going to go down, you're going to buy a put option. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. 
And then the uh, relationship between the index level and the portfolio value. Uh, let's say the index goes up to um, from 1,000 to 1,040. So it's 40 divided by 1,000. So that's a 4% return. Uh, the total return also includes the dividends. Uh, the excess return is the retur total return minus the risk-free rate. And then the excess return on the portfolio in this case is 4%. Uh, so in this case, the increase in the portfolio value is going to be the excess return on the portfolio um, plus 3%. Uh, minus 1%. So a total portfolio value of 6%. So let's say you have a portfolio value of 530. So right here, the index level is 1,040. Uh, in this case, uh, your option contract um, would have a, a exercise price, or sorry, a strike price of 960 and to be able to protect yourself from the decline in the index value, um, you would buy a, a put option on that too. Um, the European options on assets that have known yields, okay, and those are, uh, the yields would be dividend yields. Okay, so you have to adjust for the dividend yield. So the dividend yield is Q, you have the current um, strike price, I'm sorry, the current value, and then you have the value in the future at the, at the yield. So the value of the European option asset is actually reduced um, by, the, uh, by the dividend. Um, so the lower bound on the call options is the, um, is the, is the, the, the value of the, um, of the, Price uh, adjusted for the, the dividend and then the uh, strike price adjusted for the interest rate. And then the put option is just the, the reverse of that. Uh, the put call parity, as you can see, is the call plus the uh, strike uh, adjusted for the dividend yield and the put plus the, um, the value adjusted for the uh, dividend yield. And then the put uh, plus the futures contract adjusted for the, uh, the interest rate. So you have the, the value of the calls and the puts is pretty straightforward. You're just using the Black-Scholes model. Oops. As you're using the Black-Scholes model and the yield uh, can be it could be either, it's the same model, but it could either be the yield or it could be the foreign interest rate that you can use if you're doing currency options. So the, the model is exactly the same. So it's either uh, you're adjusting for the yield uh, on the stock or on the, uh, the foreign interest rate. So when you're looking at the implied forward prices and the dividend yields, again, you're going to be uh, adjusting. Uh, it's the call minus the put. Uh, you have the uh, interest rate uh, on the forward contract. And then the, uh, the Q is the, uh, is the American, um, is what you would use. This is the yield calculation that you would use in an, in an American option. And this is what you would use with just a, an over-the-counter European option when you're <coughs> valuing um, the, uh, the forward contract. You can also use a binomial model um, where, again, you're adjusting for the foreign interest rate. Uh, and then in a risk-neutral um, scenario, you're assuming that uh, the asset price is going to grow um, at some rate, and again, you need to adjust for that um, foreign rate, that, that, that yield. Uh, 
currency options. Uh, you can use the NASDAQ OMX, or you can do an over-the-counter. You can use the currency options to buy insurance to hedge off your foreign currency risk. Um, you could have a range of forward con contracts that, ex uh, that ensure that the exchange rate paid or received is going to be within some kind of range. If you're paying foreign currency, you're going to sell a put at a given strike price, and you're going to buy a call also at a given strike price. If you're receiving the foreign exchange, you're going to buy the put at a given strike price, and you're going to sell the call at a given strike price. And again, in both situations, the strike price K2 is always going to be greater than K1. And then the last example is really the Black-Scholes model. In this case, we're going to price a uh, European put option uh, with no dividends. So we know that the um, that it's not going to pay any the, the stock's not going to pay any dividends. The strike price is going to be K. The current price just happens to also be, I'm sorry, the strike price currently is 50, which is the K. The current stock price is also 50, which is SO. The risk-free rate is 10%. Uh, the volatility is 30%. Um, and again, you're going to divide that by four to get the, the three months, because this is a three-month um, time period which is 0.25. Um, and then to get D1, you're going to take the log of uh, $50 divided by the $50 plus the risk-free rate uh, plus the 0.09, which is the volatility, um, divided by 2 uh, times 0.25 divided by 0.3 multiplied by 0.25, which is the time, the square root of the time. And you're going to get D1, in this case, which is 0.2417. So to get D2, you're going to take D1 and subtract 0.3 to the square root of 0.25. And you're going to get 0.0917. So to get the European put price, you're going to take 50N times minus 0.0917 uh, to the multiplied by e to the 0.1 times 0.25 minus the 50n times negative 0.2417 and then you're going to take the 50 times 0.4634 times uh, the e to the negative 0.1 times 0.25 minus 50 times the 0.4045 and you're going to get the European per put price of two dollars and thirty-seven cents. So the the Black Shoals is a pretty straightforward model to be able to price these option contracts. It's pretty standard. Um, you could use the binomial models too to be able to do it, but the uh, Black Shoals model is the one that you want to use. Okay. That's all I wanted to go over, but I wanted to do the updates on the markets and then test you a little.